date, March 4th, 1861. I'm glad to finally be over with the slam duck session and embark on my new role as a U.S. Senator from my home state of Kentucky. Although seven states have already seceded and the nation is becoming divided, I can do little because I'm not the president due to my lack of support from the North and Lincoln's overwhelming support from the North. I am satisfied with my position, though. Abe ran a good campaign and delivered what the North and West wanted to hear. I am disappointed, though, that my previous experience did not give me an edge over Abe. I can only ponder why a man that served two terms in, in the Kentucky House of Representatives and denounced the protective tariffs advocated by the Whigs would receive less support and only get 72 electoral votes. Bah, I have nothing to be uh, complaining about. I have lived a good life and should not be, wor be worrying about such a thing. It's actually quite amusing because I had no desire for the nomination as president in the first place. My family can contest to that. When I think about it, I did, did not I did not desire to become a U.S. representative or the vice president in the election of 1856 either. I recall that in my second term as a representative, Robert P. Letcher, a former congressman and governor looking to capture my seat, tried to slander me and paint me as someone who opposed slavery. Fortunately for him, I pointed out my uh, consistent support for slavery and declared Letcher hostile to the interests of slaveholders. That undoubtedly helped me gain support in the South. I am still puzzled, though, why I did not receive more votes from the West. I showed full support from for the Kansas-Nebraska Act and popular sovereignty. During my time as the youngest president in U.S. history at the age of 36, I sided with President Buchanan and in the process ruined my friendship with Stephen Douglas because of Buchanan and I's endorsing of the Leo Compton Constitution. Those differences over le the legitimacy of admitting Kansas as a state under the Leo Compton Constitution also alienated Buchanan and Douglas. Sad to say, Douglas and I's friendship did not last very long after that. I finally sold my last slaves and that after my disagreement with Douglas, ending my days as a slaveholder. I will state that although I support Pierce's pro-slavery agenda on the principle of states' rights and believe that the secession is legal, I oppose secession as a fixture to the country's immediate problems. During the election, some of my opponents tried to accuse me of favoring the breakup of the, of the Union. Ha! Huh. I discounted their falsehoods in my speech at Frankfurt, maintaining I am an American citizen, a Kentuckian who has never did an act nor cherished a thought that was not full of devotion to the Constitution and the Union. Alas, I could only hope that somehow the vote would go to the House of Representatives. If I could have added the support of some Douglas or Bell states to the 13 that were believed to support me, I could have bested Lincoln. Unfortunately, Lincoln's support from the North was too great to surpass giving him a gargantuan 180 votes to my mere 72. I announced Lincoln as the winner of the electoral uh, college vote on February 13th of 1861 and soon after visited my cousin Mary Todd Lincoln, now the First Lady. I must say that I respect President Lincoln, even though I, mind, I may not agree with everything he believes. Well, I think it's time for a drink. Whiskey. My favorite drink. Sounds good like a day after this.